reason we have pivots is because some people just may not know how to do searching, right? It can be hard, um, especially if you don't really work with that kind of thing, trying to figure out how to do a query or do a search may take a while. And so Splunk created a feature that allows you to take um, data sets that have already been created by somebody else and create a dashboard panel from it. So uh, to get to pivots, like to create, start the process of creating one, right? What we want to do is we want to go to settings and then we want to go to data models. Um, and so that's the important part, right? To build a pivot table, it requires the use of a data model. So if you don't have data models set up within your environment, well, then you can't make a pivot because to make a pivot, we need a data model, which needs data sets that we pull from. And so from here, right, we click on a data model that we want to work in. And for some reason, let's go ahead and do all. Here we go. Great. Um, you click on a data model you want to work with. In this case, I'm going to work with this audit internal audit logs because it's out of the box for Splunk. I didn't have to build this and it uses my internal logs. So I know that the data within there is actually there uh, instead of something that I may have created that's not necessarily working. Um, so this could be things like authentication data model to find login information. It could be email data model to look at email activity, network traffic, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then within a data model, we have the data sets. These are sets of data <laughs> defined to pull in certain type of information. As we can see here, like this audit event, these it is looking for a certain type of event, which looks in index equals audit. So if it's in the audit index, it gets pulled to this data set and so on and so forth. This is a pretty poorly defined data model because there's a whopping three data sets. And actually there's only one data set with two child data sets. Most, most fully formed and fleshed out data models have a big long list here. Um, if you're not familiar with what data models are in your environment, maybe get somebody that's good with Splunk to kind of walk you through what you currently have. Um, but because there's a lot of information here. Um, I, I, I personally particularly don't like the way we have to get to the pivot table because we can see over here when you click on a data set or click on a data model, you got the pivot button over here. This is kind of the only way to get to creating a pivot table. Right, so like a feature that Splunk has built to help people build dashboards because they don't know how to, you know, they may not know how to build out a search. You have to click data models and there's a lot of buttons on the screen and half these buttons are dangerous. Um, if you accidentally click the wrong button here, you may throw everything out of whack. Um, one of the things that we do as a, uh, like a consultant that we are worried about when it comes to customer environments is messing with or editing or building out data models for the customer, because what because there's a lot that goes into it. We have to, we're pulling in a lot of data. Um, I, br I mentioned it briefly in a previous one is that a data model is a big container for different data sets within your environment. And so building that out, these are the small containers within it. If you accidentally delete one of these, who knows what ramifications you have within your environment. So if you are planning on building out a pivot table, be very careful. Don't click the delete button. Don't click the edit button. Uh, don't click the rename or add fields or anything like that, unless you know what you're doing. If you're going in here to edit it, you know, that's on, it's kind of on you. Uh, so if you're building a pivot table, just stick with clicking the pivot then you click the data set that you want to work with. And this is what I'm talking about. This is dangerous because like somebody, a way the, data, the, the way the data model works, right? You have a data model. Within the data model, you have data sets, which data sets are either searches or types of events or things like that. And so if you're looking at this list with no definition, you don't necessarily know what you're clicking. You know, I guess we could drop this down and see what fields we're working with. That's probably most helpful. Look at the fields. If this is the fields that you want to be working with, that's the data set you want to be working with. So I'll go ahead and work in the audit uh, data set here. And it brings you to this table. And this is all sort of like a drag and drop UI, makes it very nice and neat. We're building out a dashboard without needing to type the search. When you click these buttons here, uh, whether it be filters, split columns, split rows, column values, things like that, 
that translate to some sort of SPL that you're not writing. Right. So, you know, let's start with the basics here, you know, filter all time. Let's look at the last seven days, right? We're going to get a count of audit. So here's the total right here. We can already see the results. Here's the total number of audit events in the index for the last seven days. Right. And now I can add different fields. Like I can split by different rows. For example, action. We'll go ahead and add action here. Boom. Got a count of my actions and how many events. We can split it by columns, pot by host, right? So then we're gonna get our actions, we're getting, but then you can do other things, right? So like these are your aggregations. You can add multiple here. You're kind of at the whim of the data set. <laughs> so if there's not a lot going on in the data set, there's not a lot to do here. Um, one thing that, so as we can see here, right? We've already built an initial dashboard to get kind of a count of different actions. Uh, within the audit index and then we could give it different visualizations and uh, i'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because mm, that was nothing and you know i got a table here but i don't like tables so i'll go ahead and click these visualizations off to the side and get it with a nice column chart but that doesn't look great let's see what the pie chart looks like also not great apparently some of these values are so small that no matter what kind of visualization i'm going to pick here it's not going to look okay. This is the best looking one because <laughs> it's not just these thin little margins. So we can see a line chart count per day uh, for the audit index. And, and, and much like visualizations within dashboards, right? We can change a lot of the stuff here. Uh, this is all stuff that you normally see within the visualization tab when working with a search. Um, so we can, I'm not personally going to format any of this. Uh, but these are things that you can and can play around with if you'd like to. Go ahead and save this as a dashboard panel. So if we do a, uh, you know, if we go ahead and just call this a pivot, and we can view the dashboard, and it sits all nice and pretty in our dashboard. And we can go ahead and give this a title, count of events in audit index. Now, something I do want to point out is this is actually a little bit, this right here, I mean, you probably can build this out in a search if you really wanted to, uh, but if you want to go back and edit this, um, it's not simply just changing the search behind the panel because the query is actually different. Uh, if you look right here, this is the query behind the panel, and if you notice, this is a little bit different than um, than SPL. Uh, actually, it is SPL. It just uses the pivot command. Um, and if you kind of know all the stuff that goes into a pivot command, great. If you've never worked with the pivot command and you don't know what the end part here is, like I don't, um, it becomes a <laughs> it becomes a bit of a chore to figure out how to change it. So if you probably noticed, right, there were a lot of uh, click and drag elements. And so it makes it easier in that aspect. But one thing to keep in mind is that uh, it can be very limiting. So to, to kind of highlight the limiting points there is that it has to rely on a data set to, to pull the information. And so if the data set doesn't exist or the information uh, within that data set isn't what you want, you're not going to build the table that you're wanting to see. Um, you can only do uh, certain functions within the pivot table, right? We were able to split by certain columns and rows and, and get like a count. Uh, but if the data doesn't allow you to do like sums or averages or anything like that, then you won't be able to do those things. Um, and then you're kind of just at the whim of what's available. And so there are pros and cons to both, right? The pros here being you don't need to know SPL to build a dashboard, to build a simple dashboard. Right, like this right here, this gives a lot of this, this doesn't, but there's potential to give decent information such as like account by user, uh, you know, based on like failed logins, um, a uh, count, you know, your average run of the mill kind of thing, you know, averages per day, counts per day, different time charts. Um, and so you don't need to know the SPL, right? If you don't know about 
well, what index do I need to look at? You know, how do I use time chart? How do I do multiple fields? You don't need to know all that. The, the downside is that you are sort of at the whim of what is available. And so if the, like, again, if the data set doesn't exist or if the fields just don't exist, um, or if you want to get something a little bit more complex, whether you're comparing results from, from two different data sources or things like that, you, you won't be able to do that. Uh, and so this is, this feature for the most part is for your users that you, that you want to have them build dashboards, but you don't want to spend hours teaching them how to do searching language. 